Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth from Alpus Astrology at alpusastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So today I am going to do um, the first half of April, uh, an astrological uh, forecast. And of course, as usual, I will have your sun signs and or ascendants towards the end of the video. But I've decided I really need to, to separate out both the eclipse, the new moon eclipse, and then the full moon in Scorpio into two separate videos because they're both actually really important for uh, April 2024. All right, so this is a really big month. This is probably the biggest month of the year, uh, maybe even more than the year. Um, we have a Mercury retrograde starting right on the first second of April. That's followed on the 8th of April by that total new moon eclipse. Um, we've got Venus in Aries all month, and we've also got something called um, a devil comet, um, and it's only because it appears like uh, the devil in terms of a, a, a visual. I'll talk about that in a minute too. And then we've got Mars that's in Pisces all month as well. All right. So let's start off with this Mercury retrograde. So the first second of April, it will go retrograde at 27 degrees of Aries. And actually the whole retrograde period will be in Aries. Um, it will go direct on the 26th of April uh, at around 15, 16 degrees of Aries. So note whether or not you've got either of these um, degree points in your chart of significance. So what are we talking about? A sun or a ascendant um, or a conglomeration of planets is usually what I'm looking for, maybe even a midheaven as well. Um, because I think overshadowing the significant things, uh, the conjunctions, like the new moon, which is a conjunction of the moon and the sun, um, the Uranus and... Um, um, Jupiter conjunction, that this Mercury retrograde is going to play into this month of April with regards to some delays. So there's going to be a lot of good things happen to a lot of good people, but there may also be some upsets too. Now I would say that for me, this whole Mercury retrograde, certainly once it goes direct on the 26th of April, yay, that will be good. But I'm really going to say that it's got to get out of shadow. Um, and the out of shadow period is going to start on the 14th of May. And so if during this month of April, some of you hmm, are, say, in negotiations, or you're almost on the verge of getting things through or getting agreements of some sort, I'm, I'm thinking in particular about agreements, contracts, um, getting your voice across, don't give up. Because really, I'm thinking because of the significance of this month and the play in of so many things, um, we may really have to wait for a signal forward, especially with regards to independence, getting on a new path, um, expressing your individual self um, till, you know, that May time period that I've just discussed. Uh, but apart from that, we have that total new moon eclipse that is going to be at 19 Aries, 23 minutes on the 8th of April. And that will be at 11.20 a.m., Pacific Daylight Time. It will be conjuncting Chiron exactly. Uh, it will be widely conjuncting the North Nodes at 15 Aries. And Mercury will be retrograde at 24 degrees of Aries. We're going to have uh, Mars conjunct Saturn because they're both in Pisces. Um, that's at 13, 14 degrees of um, Pisces. And there will still be this ongoing uh, within a few degrees conjunction of both Jupiter and Uranus in Taurus. We're talking about this 19 to 22 degree point here, right? So really, if you look at the chart here, you can see that Aries is just stacked with regards to influence of any of these planets or luminaries, right? So Aries for sure. And I would say probably all Aries, whether it's an Aries ascendant or Aries sun sign, that you're going to be having some positive change here of some sort, wherever this falls in your chart, right? Now, when we look at the clips in terms of, and there's a lot of things published already, um, I'll, I'll put a link below here to a little bit more of a timeline for the eclipse happening. Um, 
but basically it does transverse uh, North America. It starts with Mexico and then goes through Texas. And it's in Texas that it really starts its real um, coming to the, the actual eclipse point. Then it ends in Maine and in Canada, that would be New Brunswick. So this is pretty significant that this is going through, you know, from the, the south e southwest right the way through the northeast. And so there's going to be some kind of new beginning here with regards to, and from a collective standpoint, us moving forward are on our individual path. Now we do know that Mars rules Aries and Mars likes to take action. So I would say as a month, this is going to be an action month just from even a collective standpoint. But if you have a lot of planets, angles around these degree points that I've just mentioned, especially for the eclipse, hey, this could be the month that you could take off just with that caveat where there may be a few things to tie up in May when we have that Mercury out of shadow. Now, going along with this eclipse, it's not just the eclipse. I mentioned that devil comet. Um, scientifically, what this comet is called is 12P Pons Brooks. This is going to be going on at the same time. And in fact, if you're listening to this video in March uh, when I'm making it, um, we have that, that whole devil comet will start its activation close to Earth, or coming towards Earth in March, mainly towards the latter part of March. So that's going to be an ongoing thing with the, the full moon eclipse uh, that's going to be happening on the 25th of March, right? So I would say the whole activation of both these eclipses is really going to start in March and then start playing out with intensity once we get into April. Now, this, this comet that I spoke about um, will actually have a peak brightness on the 21st of April, and the 24th of April will be its closest approach to the Sun. And then on the 2nd of June, the closest to Earth. So these are also dates to pay attention to. Um, we usually look at comets as harbingers of important messages, but this is a process, right? We have this process of this comet starting towards the end of March, ending really when it comes close to Earth on the 2nd of June. And there could be more than one message that comes through here, right? All right. We have that whole Mars that is, as I mentioned, in Pisces all of April. And because it's that ruler of the eclipse in Aries, I think it's an important player here. Now, Mars in uh, Pisces can represent a number of things. It can represent some frustrations where the effect of um, the Pisces part of it, which can be to obscure to um, present some fogginess or unclearness with regards to actions that you may want to take may be prevalent all month as well as a background noise. So again, don't get frustrated. Uh, just the best way to handle anything like this would be to look carefully at anything that doesn't make sense. That's how I would use this Mars in Pisces all of April in conjunction with everything else going on. But it can also be a time period of really taking um, assertive action with regards to what? Our spirituality, um, the higher points of ourselves. Um, it can also even play out as something like rest. Um, that whole Pisces, that rules the 12th house, and rest is very much something that's emphasized by that 12th house. So you may literally, some of you, take action with regards to, I need to rest more here and take a break. Uh, but this whole spiritual aspects, I think, are coming to play here as well. Now, Pisces as a sign also represents water or liquids of any sort, for that matter. And so with a Mars on top of it, which is action and even irritation or aggressiveness, I'm thinking there could be some aggressive action uh, that happens on the waters. Now, we already know in the news that that's happening, but this could increase in April. At its best, Mars in uh, Pisces really speaks to that spiritual warrior, right? 
and seeking and putting energy into the higher aspects of ourselves. Also, it speaks to putting some kind of action, uh, maybe even plans in place to make our dreams come true. I mean, that's very much a great inspiration for those that are in the music industry, write poetry, um, and even in the arts. This could be a time to produce some phenomenal stuff, especially in conjunction with that eclipse, the new moon total eclipse, right? All right. The 11th of April, we will have Mars conjunct Saturn at 14 uh, degrees of Pisces. And so look to the southeast sky uh, just before sunrise. You'll see both these planets. Um, you should be able to see them both with your eye, but if you've got binoculars or a telescope, that would be awesome too. But to me, this really emphasizes this whole idea of because it's in Pisces, this can also represent, you know, this idealism in religion. And so this may also come to the front. But Mars likes to put action. Um, and Saturn says, no, we got to stop here. But favorably, you could put Mars with Saturn and break up structures that need to be broken up. And in Pisces, we're really looking at these idealistic religions, that type of thing, I think, could really come to the fore here, where there may be some aggressive action to do with that somehow. But this can just, on its own, represent breaking apart uh, structures, right? I want to wish my sister Marianne a very happy birthday. She has a big milestone birthday this year in April. So happy birthday, big sis. I'll talk to you soon. I want to mention uh, one other thing that's going to be in the sky um, in April time period. This is uh, towards the um, beginning of April. So this is like the 6th of April, just before we have that total uh, new moon eclipse in Aries. We're going to have a triple conjunction and it'll involve the moon, Mars and Saturn. And look to the southeast before sunrise to see all three of these. You should be able to see, you probably see the moon first, so spot the moon and then look for both um, Mars, which will be brighter than Saturn and then Saturn as well. Maybe bring your binoculars out to take a look at this. Now, in terms of astrology, these are not exact in terms of conjunction. So this is more a visual thing that you will see uh, at sunrise on the 6th of April. And I think this might be a nice time to, usually you don't do meditations or intentions until you know after the, the new moon. But I really got a good feeling about this. So for those that do get up early anyway, this might set up some kind of really nice energy for you to tap into a few days later when we actually have that total new moon eclipse. So next I'm gonna do the uh, sun signs. Uh, as, and, and or ascendance, you pick whatever resonates with you. I like to actually listen to both. And um, we'll do that next. So I want to remind everyone before I start talking about the sun signs that, um, <clears throat> you know, ongoing with whatever I'm going to talk about, we have another layer. We've got the Mercury retrograde. And I have really discussed the Mercury retrograde with regards to the individual ascendance and sun signs in my March video. And the reason I did that was because the shadow period started there. And because this Mercury retrograde is so important, um, because it ties in with the eclipses directly, um, look back to my March video if you want to look specifically at the effect of the Mercury retrograde. But understand for all signs, we've got the Mercury retrograde going on until um, the 26th of April. And then we still have to have it go out of shadow, and that's till the 14th of May. So just bear that in mind. Uh, Mercury retrogrades always ask us to, to rethink things, maybe even to redo things, rewrite things, uh, consider things, that type of thing, right? And that we've got that whole comet uh, called, you know, the Devil Comet. That's also going to be going on, not only for April, but right the way through the beginning of June, bringing us some important messages, right? So when you think about it, the comet's bringing messages, Mercury retrogrades asking us to rethink um, or redo things, right? 
Okay, so just bear that in mind. So Taurus, when we look at this total new moon at 19 degrees of Aries, well, that's in your 12th house. And when we look at the effect of both Mars, uh, which rules that uh, eclipse in Aries, as well as Saturn in Pisces, um, we're really looking at the 11th house for you, right? And so it's both the 12th house and the 11th house that are in some ways activated. More so, I would say, the 12th house, so that eclipse. But favorably, Taurus, you're going to have your ruler, which is Venus, is going to also be in that 12th house of yours. And the Mercury retrograde will happen there too. I suspect that a lot of Taurians will be doing a lot of work behind the scenes here. Maybe um, re-evaluating some things, maybe planning, uh, putting in plans of some sort as opposed to taking action. The 12th house really is behind the scenes. It's not coming out into the open like Aries is. Um, so there may be some new starts for you with regards to, say, work behind the scenes. And behind the scenes, that can include things like hospitals, ashrams. And especially since this is Pisces, we're really speaking to spiritual as well as metaphysical aspects as well, right? But this could be a chance, I think, for some Taurians to really go back, maybe, especially with that Mercury retrograde operating in that 12th house, to be able to go back and maybe start up some discussions of some sort to um, um, maybe revise something that you're doing. But you could also, say, be working behind the scenes or in institutions where you've got to work behind the scenes to put new things in place, new actions in place uh, for the structure that you're working in. And as I said, hospitals is one example, ashrams, prisons, any government offices, anything that's behind the scenes. But the other thing, of course, you know, we must remember that Pisces is also not only a spiritual sign, but it's also the sign that we look to that represents dance, the music industry, also the film industry, so this may be a time, if you're in those professions, to really put some new initiatives in place and maybe discussions uh, with regards to an initiative in that area as well. Now, when we look at that 11th house that I discussed, where that Mars as well as um, Saturn is, well, I mean, the 11th house at its highest represents your hopes, dreams, and wishes. But typically, we talk about the groups you belong to and your friends. So there may be some real activations here with regards to dealing with maybe older friends. Certainly Saturn can represent an older person. Saturn can also represent your father in your natal chart. So there's this could also happen with some Taurians that that is activated. Um, you could also have, say, put new structures in place, take action to put new structures in place with regards to new groups that you want to form. Maybe you're going to form some new groups here. This is also, um, if you've got your own business, and some Taurians will, this could also be a time when you put new structures in place, like you take action to put new structures in place to get more longevity out of the income that you earn. But certainly this could be a time where you put energy into formulating and putting structure around, whether it's physical structure or metaphorical structure, around your hopes, dreams, and wishes, Taurus. Take care, Taurus. Hi, everyone. It's Elizabeth here from Alpus Astrology. I'd like just to give you a little more detail about um, what I do uh, with regards to the services I can offer you. Certainly, I suggest that um, if you've not had your chart ever, ever done, this would be a good time to do it. Um, contact me. All my contact de details are below and we can uh, talk to each other back and forth and arrange something for you. So I offer different services. I offer um, a full astrology report for two of my services. One is where I look at both your natal chart and your progress chart in detail. I accompany that with a physical chart as well as your charts that I'm looking at for that year. I do what's called a transit chart, which really involves your progressed chart for that year in combination with your natal chart. 
I give you a report for that as well. Typically, I'd be updating an existing report for you. I have a lot of clients that come back to me yearly. And then the other service that I offer is a combination of um, taking a quick look at the astrology. Typically, it would be a year or two year, what stands out for me. Looking at that and then adding in at the end a tarot card reading to accompany it. I record that and send that to you pre-recorded. So that's not a live session. The other two that I do are live session. And then I offer obviously custom. I do a lot of um, picking marriage dates, um, compatibility. I typically use what are called Davison charts uh, or Sinistry as well, where I can combine two charts to see how, does, uh, how do these two charts of these people work together. More often, it's going to be sort of romantic relationships, but it can also be business relationships too. How well do we work together type thing by producing one chart. So I do all that. As I said, I would love to do your chart. Contact me below and we can work together to make that happen for you.